This is the Deliberate Talks Weekly Podcast, powered by the Pixelated Egg Digital Ventures. Tune in every week to learn something new about digital marketing and entrepreneurship. And now, over to the voice of your host, Dukshin Adiantaya. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of the Season 3 of the Deliberate Talks Podcast. And today with us, investing his experience into a conversation about career and financial planning is Soren Parekh. Hi, Soren. How are you doing, dude? Hi, Takshin. I'm good. Very happy to be here. Glad. Likewise, I'm happy to host you. Soren is a writer and a content marketer with Paytm, and he's fond of true crime, humor, and cricket. But first thing first, Soren, leave aside crime, humor, and cricket. How did you end up in Paytm, and what did you do before that? Okay. So, I don't think it's... As much as a challenge as people imagine of getting into a big company like Paytm, mm-hmm. because even big companies that's like Paytm or you know bigger tech companies like maybe Google, Amazon, Microsoft, all of these companies they require quality talent to be on board. Mm-hmm. I joined Paytm earlier this year because I wanted to you know have a larger role compared to what I was doing earlier. I started my career as a copywriter in 2004 with an ad agency. Mm-hmm. Post which in 2007, I moved to financial writing with a research publication called Value Research. Okay. There I worked as a writer editor for eight years and pretty much learned everything about finance on the job. Yeah. Before I joined Value Research, I had no clue about personal finance or anything related to mutual funds, investing, stocks, insurance, nothing of that sort. Right. While I was editing articles and writing for them, I got a hang of everything. And then I moved to startups in 2016 with ClearTax. And uh, yeah, so past five years, I've been five, six years, I've been into the startup space, worked as a content writer, and then I've seen content writing evolve into content marketing. And uh, currently, I lead the content marketing charter for Paytm. Super, yeah, super. But tell me about that interview that you had at Paytm. How was that like? <laughs> uh, it was it was the first time I was interviewing online entirely, you know, ah. because of the pandemic. So that, you know, usually in a physical interview setup, you kind of have a more, have a better hang of, you know, how your, how the person opposite to you is feeling about you or, you know, you know, from the body language also, you can make out whether they are accepting what you're saying or, you know, there's something that uh, you need to quickly do. Right. Which is a big challenge when you're interviewing online. But uh, I had had some good conversations with the folks at PTM. I met the business head, I met the marketing head, the design head. And essentially, they they had a lot of questions for me because content marketing as a function was kind of new for this business vertical. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of questions that they wanted to get answers. And I think I I I think they would have been satisfied with what what I had to say (laughs) since I'm here. Right, right. And and you did mention about how you have, you know, uh, moved from agency setup to a startup setup, right? So in, in your words, say three pros of working in a startup and uh, three cons of working in a startup. If, if I should begin with the cons, I think the cons would be that, you know, like not particularly a con, but startups are often glamorized a lot. You know? <laughs> All of us hear or read in the media about stories of founders who raise like so much funding in millions and there are startups which, so this itself we have seen a ton of startups becoming unicorns. It seems like you can compare it with Bollywood maybe or with the film industry. <laughs> right. know, everybody wants to work as startup because it's high paced environment. There's a lot of good work to be do, done, a lot of real problems that startups are solving. But, you know, the reality is that it's a lot of a hard, it's a lot of hard work as well. Right. Like, like like whatever goes into making a movie, there's a lot of hard work that is done by a lot of people before you see you know any actor or any actress or any good direction in a movie. Right. Similarly, for a startup, also you know you see a founder raising the funding, but there's a lot of work that happens behind him with his team, with his or her team, and so yeah, it is also a lot of hard work. It's a lot of fun also because you will get to see a lot of uh, changes. You get to experience different things. Like if you're, if you're a marketer, you'll also get to interact with sales team, design teams, see how these teams work. You can also you know, be part of customer support to understand what are the problems that your business uh, is facing in terms of, you know, the customers that they have and how can 
your particular function help in solving these problems for the customers that you already have as well as for the prospective customers that you want to onboard mm-hmm. so could i you know went across from your question but uh, let's say cons would be that maybe you know it's not an environment for everyone somebody who is uh, you know wants a more stable kind of job more of a steady job maybe a startup is not for them mm-hmm. apart from that i can't think of lot of cons because you know there's a lot of work work life balance also at startups you know it's not like as if startups is not not a 9 to 5 job mm-hmm. it is quite flexible in terms of you know most startups have flexible timings a lot of startups now have four four day weeks so you can pick your time you can and we largely we work on goals rather than on you know time so right. we don't track the time that somebody spending we we have okrs or kras which are quarterly broken down into monthly and weekly Mm-hmm. and as long as the care is being met then i don't think where it is startup wouldn't care about you know how much time you're spending right right interesting because certain the point that you picked up about work life balance very interesting is because i think it depends on which startup and where you're working right because right. a lot of startups actually contribute to work fatigue and you know because they are a startup there's always a culture which says you know we need to keep hustling till till yeah. we reach our milestone so there there is a debateful conversation about the work life balance in a startup but you know from from your perspective and where you are working it looks like a more uh, flexible and more uh, yeah work friendly atmosphere but because you have experience in this and because of the multiple stories that you hear about other startups probably the smaller setups do you think for someone who's starting their career is it a good thing to start a career in a startup or do you think they should probably you know be a part of agencies like you started your career or where how do they start their career i think when i started my career there were no startup i started my career in 2004 right and you no know, there were very few types of companies back then but if somebody is starting the career right now and you know they they should definitely think of startups you know it depends entirely on the person whether they want to go for an agency or you know a larger corporate an mnc or a startup but there are a lot of advantages of starting uh the career with a startup because like i said earlier you can do a lot of different things before you actually figure out what you want to do mm-hmm. like a young person who is just out of college and looking to you know start work now would have a rough idea of you know what they want to do in life mm-hmm. but this kind of idea can also change very quickly and very you know suddenly like you might figure out that you know we ourselves know that a lot of engineers end up in a different kind of roles entirely mm-hmm. like i have people in my team who are engineers they don't want to want engineers they wanted to do marketing or content people are passionate about writing so they try to get into content mm-hmm. so this is the kind of thing which you can explore with a startup versus you know you might not get that opportunity to do with a larger company right once you get into the startup if it's a let's say an early stage startup then mostly most of the people in an early stage startup are wearing a lot of different hats mm-hmm. so you know i have myself worked in content but i also you know helped a bit with design i have i've done customer support i have done sales so you know in small smaller parts mm-hmm. which which you know if i wanted to i wanted to change from let's say marketing to sales i could have done that in a startup so right. kind of opportunity does come and you know to also to elaborate on the work life balance thing i think the hustle culture is there at startups but largely not only in the startups that i work for i also seen or you know when i talk to my peers or the people i work with across you know or the people i interact with mm-hmm. everybody largely is now seeing a change where work life culture is you know given more attention than it was let's say 2 3 years back earlier what used to happen was you we have all heard stories of people getting pinged for work late in the night or very early in the morning because right. because the managers or the bosses knew ki ye to ghar pe hi hai that has now changed because people who are working at startups they understand the value of work life balance which is forcing also the startups to understand why you know their employees need to have work life balance and also you know when of larger startups or you know popular startups do that then those other ones also tend to follow because retaining talent also a very big issue with startups right absolutely true so sorry uh, the other part of you know career is talking about from the from, from the financial perspective as well right when we talk about startups there's also a salary point of view right some of the startups pay you really well when when you compare it with an agency or from a corporate perspective right and uh, then there are bad days with investors and cash crunches with most of the startups when you don't get salaries for months 
and you've been into the finance personal investment and other aspects of it as well how does one plan their career financially and professionally in such a case um i think i'm going to be a like speak like a broken record <laughs> and this is something that you know anyone who's into investing will tell you that the sooner you start investing the better it is mm-hmm. it's it's not a thumb of rule but uh, it's, a, it's something that i did when i started working i in the first uh, two years when I, i was with an agency i was i didn't understand investing i didn't know what investing so i was not investing i was pretty much spending uh, what i was earning which was anyway not a lot hmm. but when i moved to value research i started to understand the value of investing yeah. and you know i started to invest 10% of what i was earning okay and as my salary grew for a few years i it was still 10% but because i was earning a little bit more i was able to invest also a little bit more that 10% mm-hmm. self grew mm-hmm. and then once i was more comfortable i uh, increased the quantum investments as well and so you know like anybody who is starting to work and you know they want to plan they need to plan for their future because like you correctly mentioned you know salaries can be exorbitant to begin with and you can end up facing a concern later on right when you're not earning or you know you're suddenly out of a job or the startup you are working with shut down shuts down they end up without money so in such a case whatever you've saved in the past is what is going to be useful to you in the future mm-hmm. so you know start saving as much as you can begin with let's say 10% and then keep increasing as you keep earning a lot more right right makes sense okay. also i think a lot of uh, young people they tend to ignore insurance yeah i was i was getting that to in fact you know again from the benefits perspective of startups you know no fds no insurances also from that aspect of it you know a lot of people struggle with that anyway as a conversation how did you plan this better during your journey towards startups so now startups you know or even smaller companies who have less than 20 employees can provide health insurance there are there are startups themselves who are solving for this problem mm-hmm. so you know there are startups like plum there is a couple of other places where you know they allow smaller setups to provide health insurance to their employees right so while that gets taken care of now but it's also important for the for every individual to have their own insurance policy mm-hmm. there are because you know let's say you are you move from one place to another and there's a gap of two months or one month where you're not employed by anyone at that point you if you don't have your own insurance policy you'll be left without insurance right. and forward something happens it would that would result in a big financial crisis you know mm-hmm. for not only you but your family who will have to then support you mm-hmm. so insurance kind of you know health insurance makes a lot of sense to have right from the start and it's not very expensive also on top of that you get income tax benefits on the premium that you pay Right. so it's it's beneficial all around to have insurance when you begin right right okay and and you know just extending that conversation of finances uh another part to career is converting hobby into a career right uh, you love writing you've converted it into a career for yourself and how does one not compromise on salaries when when they shift from a career into pursuing their hobby full time and and how do they plan their f- financial stability in this case if they do to be honest i did compromise on my salary because right. you know when i started working in the first few years like you know the the environment right now is very different from the way it was in early 2000s or even mid 2000s right right now there are a lot more opportunities and a lot more things that you know with internet and everything that everybody can do so let's say to answer your question if somebody is you know looking to it's doing some kind of a job right now and they want to move they want to turn their passion or their love into their career mm-hmm. then they can start it as a side hustle mm. you know they can work out in on the evenings or weekends you know let's say let's a sales person to use example of a sales person who wants to get into writing mm-hmm. then there is no need for the you know for that individual to leave their day job they can keep doing that during the weekdays but mm-hmm. in the evenings or in the weekends they can explore their writing passion as a career option Right. and once once they able to you know do some freelancing or to do you know, some they can start online on their own once they have a comfort level where they can you know make a decent amount of money out of it then that is when they can make the shift entirely right and and but from a financial perspective apart from the freelancing bit right like you said you've taken a hit and i know a lot of friends who have you know taken a hit with respect to salaries and this thing is it is it a wise move at that point of time thinking from a long term perspective 
or do you think you need to save enough to then get into that career mode i think it, uh, there are two sides to this coin mm-hmm. there is actually never an ideal time mm-hmm. because you know everybody needs money and you know if you don't do it very early in your career you might not able to do it later on because then you you know typically for us in india we then tend to get married and then right family children and then children education and all of that you know you get into a home you have a home on emi mm-hmm. so if you you know postpone doing this the difficult it's going to get right so the earlier you can make the shift or you know take that risk that's also most advisable mm-hmm. while at the same time you know if you have actually you know, let's say you work for 2 years and you save something for those first 2 years you might be able to make the shift third year without without bothering too much Mm. because you might have some saved money and you might not have a lot of responsibilities right so the sooner you can the better which also you know i all be also see a lot of young founders starting up mm-hmm. there are also like you know older people who start up but yeah the risk is a lot easier to take when you are younger as opposed to when you are older right right absolutely and you know just going back to this conversation about the startup culture beyond the financial conversation that we had what's your motivation to not start something of your own i'm very keen on understanding that i am motivated to start something of my own mm-hmm. and i have been exploring a couple of ideas over the past 2 years the honest answer is that i have not chanced upon an idea which is which has moved me enough to uh, start something of my own right because i think uh, you know from the startup culture you see a lot of pumped up energies around you to meet goals and milestones right it does rub on you as well so a, a lot of people who kind of contemplate at that point of time like you said probably need the right kind of idea and you're all set to do it a lot of people are in that situation right now in startups as well when is that right move though you've said that there is no right time to start something of your own or take that career leap do you think there needs to be a proper planning before you exit into a career mode and get into an entrepreneurial mode yeah a proper planning would definitely help But the right time for me hasn't come so far because uh, I didn't want to start up for the sake of starting up. Mm-hmm. I, want, I wanted to start up when, when you know that one one idea really clicks. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I whenever I I keep getting ideas and I try to you know explore them, I try to research about them, try to uh, do a little bit with them and try to figure out if there's if this idea is viable or not for the long right. term. Right. So. Right. to validate the idea is you know once once you have validated an idea which you think has a long term potential then that would be the ideal time to start mm-hmm. right okay great great sarin with that uh, we conclude the first round of questions and we are quickly going to speed up things and head towards a rapid fire round of questions it starts in 3 are you ready for this yep okay then three best read ups articles books podcasts videos for career tips mm, the minimalist entrepreneur by sahil lavingya it's mm-hmm. a, it's a book that he's just recently come out with he is by the way the founder of gumroad right and has a very different non unicorn approach to starting up which is very useful i found it very useful i'm reading it right now mm-hmm. and it's helping me a lot so that's definitely one but one book as a writer which appealed to me at all was on writing by stephen king mm mm-hmm. any writer whether you know somebody who's looking to do content writing or fiction writing or any sort of writing that that's definitely a book that a writer should read mm-hmm. and the third one i would say is a uh, book that influenced me a lot was uh, on advertising by ogilvy it was kind of the book that pushed me into copywriting okay okay fantastic three best read ups for financial tips mm, go to valueresearchonline.com it's the most comprehensive source of you know unbiased financial tips and advice on everything from investing mutual funds income tax insurance so like i said i learned everything about personal finance on the job and valu research is the entire source on that apart from that the small case blog which is a very good resource on you know passive investing and there's the clear tax resources on insurance on income tax is very useful okay your inspiration to do better in career um my peers as well as my own my own uh, understanding of what i'm doing so my largest inspiration has been uh, observing the changes that are happening in my uh, field and trying to make my myself or my work reach the, those standards which let's say the, my peers or you know other companies have achieved okay 
And uh, in your words, working in a startup feels like, complete the sentence. Working in a startup feels like a lot of fun, a lot of energy. Okay. And uh, three startups you absolutely adore by the way they've grown or how they function. I adore Cred a lot because of the way it has grown. It now started from uh, credit card bill payments to you know other kind of payments like rent. And now they have their own e-commerce store as well. And it's a very fascinating story to follow as well. So Cred is one of them. Apart from that, I I adore Gumroad. You know, I mentioned Sai Lavinga earlier. I mm-hmm. adore his startup as well because of the problem it's also you know to help a small creators you know sell their art is essentially what Gumroad does. And uh, one more I would say is I think a startup that I'm using a lot these days, Dunzo. Dunzo right. also as uh, the whole marketing of Dunzo is beautiful and you know often marketing leads to a poor product, which is not the case of Danzo. So Danzo is another startup that I've delivered. Okay. And uh, finally, what's next for you? I see myself at Paytm for a few years. And at the same time, I see myself working on my my own startup and the own product that I was speaking about. And hopefully I can scale that to a level where I can do it full time. Okay. And before we summon up this conversation, Mm -hmm. Five tips for people who are stuck between career and hobby. According to you, how should they plan their shift better? Uh, tip one is don't leave your day job before you have enough runway in terms of money, let's say six months of expenses to cover. A tip two would be to start your hobby or your passion, turn it into a freelancing or side hustle, a weekend project thing, and see how well you can you know do well in it. A tip three would be to not prolong uh, this for too long because there is there is no idle time the sooner you can do it the better and tip four would be to you know, enjoy have fun with whatever you're doing whether it's your job or your side hustle if you're having fun you will you will do well it and then money will eventually follow and tip five is to keep saving as as much as you can every month and take care of your manage your personal finances as you know as to the bare minimum of investing and insurance Okay, super. Great, Soren. With that, we've come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for making time for this conversation. And before going, where can our listeners follow you or get in touch with you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram. My handle is the Soren. T-H-E-S-A-U-R-I-N. Super. I had a great time hosting you. Hope you enjoyed your time on the show as well. Definitely did. Super. Thanks, Soren. Best wishes always. Cheers. So that brings us to the end of today's conversation. And before we wrap up, here's an interesting fact for the day. According to a read from Entrepreneur, 23% of startups mentioned team issues leading to failures. So would you start a career in a startup or do you prefer to establish yourself before taking risks? Over to you to think about it. So that's it for today. This is Dakshin Adyantaya signing off. Don't forget to hit the follow button on your favorite audio platforms. Or get in touch with me on the deliberate talks at gmail.com. Join in next Monday for a new episode. Until then, inspire and be inspired. Mm-hmm.